Hey, hey, happy Sunday. Today on WTF is this. We are going to talk post-surgical blues. Ooh, let's go. Okay, so this is a very, very common topic that happens a lot of times in uh, men and in women after they've had surgery and it's called post-surgical blues and it's super super common It's not talked about a lot. So we are going to discuss it today. What is post-surgical blues? Okay um, A lot of times so basically what it is it's an array of emotions that you go through after surgery or a, um, Kind of a roller coaster of emotions we experience this a lot of times and we see this a lot of times but we don't talk about it specifically in the surgery or plastic surgery world so kind of like postpartum blues or post baby blues that's a real thing that women experience um and it's a major change in their life just as surgery is a major change in a lot of people's lives um midlife crisis people get kind of depressed and go through a rave of emotions there so it's basically um, any type of drastic change or um, event that takes place in your life and you kind of um, get a little down. Um, you go through a roller coaster of events, but mostly you're on the bottom uh, side of, uh, of it, being depressed. Um, so we're going to discuss it and we're going to talk about tips and tricks to kind of help you get out of that funk or just realize that you're in it. Some people don't even know that they're in it. They don't even know what it is or why they're feeling the way they're feeling. So we're gonna talk about it. We're gonna talk about four different emotions that you feel after like plastic surgery. Then we're gonna talk about tips right after. So number one, immediately after surgery till about seven days, I would say. So immediately when you wake up to about seven days, you're gonna be like, what the hell did I just do? What was I thinking? This is not <laughs> what I expected. Who told me to do this? Why did I do this? How do girls do this? All, all of those thoughts are gonna go through your head for that first week. Um, and it's okay, like allow yourself to feel those feelings of what the hell? Why did I do this? <laughs> this was stupid. Why did I do this? It's okay, I'm not a therapist, I'm not a therapist, you guys, but I wanna give you permission to feel those feelings for a few. You know, I'm not saying stay in that place, but we feel these emotional, emotional things and emotions, that's a normal thing that people feel. And sometimes we get upset with ourselves for feeling bad, which takes us even further down into a rabbit hole. So it's okay to feel why to feel those thoughts allow yourself to do that okay because that is what you're gonna feel why did i do this what the hell was i thinking i was stupid Ugh, like all of these things so that's gonna happen for the first immediately till about seven days the second emotion you're gonna feel from about one week or seven days to about three weeks is who is this you're gonna look at yourself in the mirror and you're not even gonna recognize yourself because a lot of swelling is going to be on board. Um, if you got a BBL and like chin lipo, your face may be super, super swollen because of fluid and because you're face down for your BBL part portion of the procedure. So even, even around the abdomen, you're gonna be so swollen. You're gonna have your faja on, you're gonna have your lipo boards in, and you're just gonna feel heavy. You're gonna step on the scale and it may give you a number higher than what you wore before surgery so you're not even going to recognize that and you're that's going to bring on a lot of frustration because you're going to be like what the heck like i had surgery why do i weigh more than before i even went into surgery that's all going to be fluid retention you guys so don't freak out allow yourself to feel that way know in your mind like okay this is i may have a little bit of post you know, surgical blues coming on if you feel down about that or if that makes you feel very, very sad or frustrated. Um, the third uh, emotion that you'll feel, which will be about three weeks to maybe three or four months, is I made a mistake. Like you may look in the mirror again and just not like what you see. Um, you may feel like you went with the wrong surgeon. Um, you may feel like the uh, fairy, the fluff fairy didn't fluff you out as, 
as much as you want it to be fluffed out. Um, you may have started to work out and swelling may have started to increase a little bit with, with you know, um, maybe some of the workouts that you're doing. Um, so you may feel like you've made a mistake. So that may be the fourth uh, feeling that you feel. And, or the third feeling, sorry. And then the last feeling you'll feel is I look snatched. Like, yes, I'm in love with my results. Like what? And that happens about from the three to four months to about six months. At that six month mark, you are fully back to yourself. You are 100% back to your daily life. Um, because a lot of times at the beginning, very, very beginning, immediately to that one week, you feel very helpless. You're lying in bed, you can't do hardly anything for yourself, so that gives you more time to think about why the hell did I do this? But at the last phase, at the six month mark, you are fully doing the things that you can do again and you're 100% back to your job, you're 100% back to yourself. So then you are like, ooh, like, yes, my doctor did that. And I try to tell people this, like when women get our hair colored, um, in like a total different color or something. That first couple days, we're like, this is ugly. This is straight ugly. Like she didn't do it right. I want my money back. Like I hate this. And then what happens? You go out and you get a little compliments. You get a few compliments and you know, people are like, I'm really digging that color. Like, oh girl, that looks so good. And then in your mind, you're like, yes, this color is for me. Like I love it. Oh my gosh, she did that. Same thing with surgery. You go out around your six months, you got your faha on, you got this new dress, you know, you are popping, people are giving you compliments, they are recognizing that you did something, but they don't know what. But you look good, girl, they're probably telling you, girl, you've been in the gym, right? And you're gonna be like, yes, I've been in the gym. So once you get compliments under you, then you're like, you start to see what they see. And you start to say, my doctor did that. I love my doctor. I wouldn't regret my decision or anything like that. Also at the six month mark, you probably can start to entertain maybe a round two or maybe doing something else. During the first week, You what, what do you say? I'm never gonna do this again, right? <laughs> I hear that so often. I'm never gonna do this. I don't know how girls do round two, round three. I'm not doing it no more. But around six months, then we start to entertain like, mm, we start to forget, not totally forget, but you know, we went through it, we know what to expect. So now we feel a little more comfortable maybe doing it again. And we may entertain that thought even more. So that is what kind of the roller coaster of um, emotions that you will have. Um, so if you start to feel like those, any of that I listed, you may have some post-surgical, post-op blues. That's okay, we're about to talk about tips and tricks to help you get through. So one, before you have surgery, before you even have surgery, I would write down some positive affirmations that you can pull out or pull up on your phone um, or, on, or write them down, you can pull them out on a piece of note paper. Um, that can help you get through when you're in that first two weeks, right? So girl, positive information is like, girl, you got it. You are going to be snatched. Um, you are love. Women are the bomb.com. Um, we, you can do this, all this positive things, right? I would even maybe look at some YouTube bloggers who have had surgery before, some positive YouTube bloggers that have had, um, or vloggers and bloggers that have had surgery before, go to their videos, read something that they wrote um, or written, maybe that they can help you through these tough times. So that's one. Or even write yourself a little letter or something like that to tell yourself how proud you are of doing this and going through this. And this is a scary journey and you did it. You, you made it to this side, the flat side, like people like to say. So yeah, that would be one tip. Two, have um do something different not just on your phone because those first few weeks we're just scrolling this is what we're doing social media is a mind killer you guys so it could really take you to another place you're seeing instagram models you're seeing um Nicki minaj you're seeing make the style you're seeing all these people kylie jenner kim kardashian you're seeing all these people with great bodies you guys 
don't consume that at a time that you are not feeling great. That is not going to help. So do something totally different. Here at Shapes, we have games. We have like old school games like Connect Four. Um, we have Uno. We have um, crossword puzzles. Now listen, I did a crossword puzzle and I was stuck for like two hours. I was having so much fun. I didn't realize like, you know, I was using a different part of my mind that was stimulating. It was actually really, really fun. So if you come in the first three pages, if you come to Shapes and the first three pages are done, I did them. <laughs> So yeah, crossword puzzles, um, movies. I know during COVID we've been locked in the house and we've been watching a lot, but maybe just movie and popcorn binge watch a series or something. Just to get your mind off magazines, reading. We have magazines here at Shapes. We have books here at Shapes. So reading is something that could potentially people like and be fun or listen to an audio book or something like that. Just something podcast, something totally different from being in your own mind on Instagram or on Facebook, you know, those types of things. Number three, maybe look, start looking at some clothes to buy. I wouldn't purchase anything yet because you're still swollen. You may have to try on some stuff to get your actual true size once we get to that six months mark. Um, but it's not, you know, you can window shop. You can just drop something in your little cart here and there. Maybe buy a purse, maybe buy some shoes or something like that. Like. You know, retail therapy is a real thing, okay? <laughs> so that's the tip. Another tip is have a support, a strong support system. This is one of my favorite tips, actually, because it's so important to have positive people around you. Don't call that friend who's going to tell you, girl, I told you, I told you not to do that. I don't know why you do, did that. I don't know why you, um, you didn't listen to me. Like, who wants to hear that when you are in pain, you're trying to recover? That's just negativity. And who knows? They may be jealous of you. They may be jealous that you did it before they did it. Or they may not have had the financial ability to have surgery and you did. And they're mad at you because you didn't wait for them. Or who knows? Like, people have jealous friends. That's a real thing. You may have to cut that friend loose honestly um but that's a whole nother video so just have positive people around you if you don't if you don't talk to that friend until about month three if you have to that's okay this is about you and your feelings you don't have to give your energy to that this is all about you all right and i'm giving you permission to be selfish in this moment because that is what it's going to take no one wants to be around negativity all right um, another tip is look at some old photos of yourself. I have plenty in my phone. So go all the way back and look at those old photos and then you that may be enough to snap you back. Like, girl, yes, I know this something had to be done. Enough was enough. So have that memory lane journey, go down that lane, bring up those uh, pictures and remind yourself of why you did this in the first place. And the last tip is trust the process, you guys. It is a process. It's not going to be um, a short process. It's going to be fairly lengthy. Um, and you may have a two-step process if you are doing lipo first or maybe BBL and then a tummy tuck or then breast. Or it may be a longer journey than you um, really, really anticipate. So trust that. Trust that everything's going to work. Trust that your surgeon is great. Um, trust that you are going to do the work after you've had plastic surgery because that, let's be real, that takes work too to keep those results in line and not result to uh, the bad eating habits that you had before or not working out. Like that still has to happen too. So trust yourself that you are going to continue on the right path. All right. I hope this video helped you guys. If you need to come back and watch this video when your big day is up, I, I give you permission to, and I, I give you permission to love yourself. Love yourself, you guys, regardless of what you decide to do, plastic surgery or not, like, you have to love yourself. Because guess what? Who's going to? If you're not, you have to love yourself. So I hope this video was helpful. I hope that on your big day, you have a successful surgery. I hope you have, hope you have speedy recovery. And yes, I hope you be blessed. Alrighty. Mwah. Oh, 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 oh.